do the podcast. I'm, I, have podcast. To, I have to finish this for Dragon Con. Well, we got to do a report. Doug recently went to Otakon. Unfortunately, without me this year, I had to skip out. Uh, remember that episode we did about real life and things that come up? Yeah, things came up, mostly uh, not come up as in money. <laughs> but, so I made the choice not to go to Otakon and missed their 20th year, which was uh, also super bummer. But how was their 20th, 20th year? They, what did they do special? Uh, they, they made a big deal out of it. They had you know a lot of more banners than usual. You saw like medallion banners on, on the street. Hotel employees had buttons. Even like the downtown ambassadors in the Inner Harbor had like 20th anniversary Otakon hats. So the city definitely celebrated. Yeah, they, the That's city really cool. rolled out the red carpet nice. for them. It's then they had so many big events. Um, they brought back Mystery Anime Theater 3000, which was fantastic to see. I mean, not only did they were excited to bring it back, and like this was something the staff was demanding, as well as fans and even the families of the people who run the event came for just to see that return. Um, they had a lot of musical acts this year too. That was a big thing. So what? who did they have for musical acts? There were definitely some big names who I, uh, I don't know. Um, they had TM Revolution come back. Uh, he did an amazing show and he hadn't been to Otakon in 10 years. Home and Kazuko, the band, they came back after a couple of years back and they had uh, promised in their previous show that they would return and they made good on their word. Um, and they also had uh, Chiaki Ishikawa do a performance and of course the one that everyone went crazy for was Yoko Kano. It's alright. It's alright. Um, so that was a really big thing. I know a lot of people went to Otakon specifically to see that concert. Yeah. How, how did they handle that concert? Did they have it at the convention center? or did They, they had it at the somewhere? convention center which was a little weird because the other like uh, the Homemade Kazuko and the TM Revolution concert were at the arena where they have a lot of other things and my understanding is you wanted to have a smaller show but at the same time when you throw out the name Yoko Kano so many people, people are gonna see it. and I mean people were lining up in line to they had these little tickets these special tickets to get it and people were lining up so early I <laughs> um, and like for her autograph sessions I mean, I got up at 6.15 in the morning and was in line by, by 7 to get in line for a ticket for autograph tickets that were went on sale. And there were probably were, people were already there, huh? Yeah, I got there at 7.30 and I was a 43rd in line out of 200 seats. The guy at the front of the line had been there since 2 a.m. And part of me is like, wow, you're devoted. On the other hand, like, yeah, that, wow. Has, has he ever been to Baltimore before? <laughs> you couldn't pay me to be at the streets. Of yeah. No offense, but, you know. It's, I mean, I, they really pushed her, and it definitely got a lot of people, but I feel like a lot of people also walked away really disappointed because they couldn't get that concert ticket. They couldn't get that autograph. If Yoko Kano was the thing you wanted to see most, for a lot of people, it was the only thing they got to do because they were waiting in lines for tickets and things like that. So that was the trade-off. I mean, the concert was incredible. I mean, it's I'm kind of glad it couldn't be recorded uh, for video of it because it was just sit back and take it in. They had a projection onto a scrim cloth on the piano, and they did all these neat sound effects and everything. Like she played one song, whereas like an EKG a heart rate monitor. Um, one of the coolest things was hearing everyone in the audience sing along when they did Gravity the Wolf Rain Closer and kind of one of the neat highlights for me was hearing her play on piano the national anthem the Star Spangled Banner and everyone sitting in the audience singing along with that as well I'm like now if that's cultural exchange I, you know that's so amazing to see that kind of a relationship between the two cultures really form something amazing now past the the music acts, which you seem to spend a lot of time for, how about the panels? Did you get to any of those? I got to a couple this year. I, not as many as I would have liked to. Um, of course, I got to see Mike's Tools, worst anime ever, which always hysterical, always really funny. Uh, Daryl Surratt from Anime World Order, one of the ones he did was Anime's Craziest Deaths, which is funny, but, but you don't think it's going to be that. Um, and that both of those filled some of the largest panel rooms they have. I also got to the Asperger's and Fandom panel, and 
I would have to say, unfortunately, I was really disappointed. This was one I was hoping would be really well, and the panelist's name who escapes me at the moment, his heart was in the right place, and I give him a lot of credit for trying this. But so much of it was him just telling kind of his life story, not really engaging the audience, not really explaining what Asperger's so is. So it's more like anecdotal and yeah, of being a, a, you know, a Yeah, and thing. I'd love to see this come back as something very well researched, have a lot of information, really talk about it. I think it's, I don't think it's a bad idea, I think it just needs to be... Executed better. Yeah, and it, work, it works out really well. But, like I said, it's, there's a, some, a lot of other panels, you know, they had brought a lot of big uh, celebrity uh, creators from Japan, and unfortunately I just, I was running out of time this year, I felt like Saturday I blinked and it was gone. So, I mean, I guess they say time flies when you're having fun, and I was having a good time. Now, the big news that came out after the convention was over, that they're moving to D.C. in 2017 to a convention center there, which is, like, it's pretty close to, like, where the White House is yeah. and stuff like that. So, I've never been there. Have you? No, I haven't. It's, I have such mixed feelings. I've been going to Otakon, this was my 13th year, and it's always been at the Baltimore Convention Center, but at the that, same time... As, as far as you've been there. It's yeah, and, and it's... It's starting to feel more and more cramped. I think they do need to get a larger venue. But at the same time, I, I will miss knowing where all the hotels are, where all the restaurants are, how easy it is to get there from the airport. And I think they're making the right move by giving people several years' notice, so it's not going to feel like they're just you know pulling the rug out from under them. And I mean, they said they'll be there for a couple years and then see what happens, if because they're apparently going to do a ton of renovation and rebuilding of the convention center in Baltimore. And it's kind of hard because you see that and it's like, wow, Baltimore rolled out the red carpet for their 20th year and at the end of it, it's like, oh, well, guess what? We're leaving this soon. Yeah, it was interesting to see someone, um, a friend of mine on Facebook posted a link to a news story on a Baltimore local station that was talking about how Otakon is one of their biggest events and because they're moving what that's going to mean for the future of the convention center and it was really interesting to see that this event that we all love to go to nerds just being nerds has so much impact on a city and its convention center and it was really kind of weird yeah and i think a lot of people you know a lot of fans and sometimes other people don't realize the financial impact a convention can have i mean on the other hand this could be positive there is more space I, one of the best things I, ideas I heard was they can use this to kind of say, okay, we have a clean slate for all these rooms now because so many cons it's like this room, we're putting stuff in this room because this is where we've always had this room instead of saying, okay, let's find a better use for it. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the big thing. And, of course, the last thing I got to say is you guys have heard my opinion on Otakon this year. But... I didn't walk away empty-handed, and I'm not the only one. I actually talked with a lot of our friends and just other people at the attendee, attending Otakon. So now that you've heard me, let's check out what they have to say. Hi, I'm Bill Rogers, and I was at Otakon's 20th uh, anniversary convention this year. Had a great time. And actually, um, I have been working in voice acting since 2001, but 20 years ago when the first Otakon happened, uh, I was a goofy college kid and we all hopped in our cars and drove out to Penn State and did the very first Otakon. I have to say that they've come a very long way. I've done about 10 Otakons in the, the, of the 20 that have existed and uh, it's been a while since I've been here but I really wanted to come out for the 20th anniversary and I had a great time and uh, hello to everybody at AnimeCons.com and hope you guys enjoyed Otakon uh, on their 20th year. Wow, okay, so this con's 20 now. Holy crap, it's almost able to buy beer. And uh, let's put it over, let's put it this way. This con, I have been coming here for what now? Five, this is my fifth Otakon, and I can't believe how amazing this con gets each and every year. I enjoy it more and more and more. Downside to this year, I didn't sleep. That's right, you heard me, I did not sleep. And I barely ate. So I'm not as energetic as I could be. That said, woo! 
I've been going to Otakon since 2008 now, and more and more as the years passed, uh, I've become convinced that it, it is by far the best uh, anime convention in North America. Um, there's nothing like it in terms of spectacle, in terms of you know the, the quality of people that show up that you get to hang out with, all the people you meet, all the guests, the venue itself, the inner harbor. It's it, everything just seems to be perfect about this show, and you know every con has a few minor disappointments, but Otakon always seems to have the fewest. And re really, it was just yet another great show this year. Um, I got to meet a famous voice actor, a director. Got to go to two concerts. It's, it was incredible. Um, it was a worthy 20th anniversary, and I can't wait to go home so I can immediately book my hotel for next year. Hey guys, here at the 20th Otakon and uh, Adam Sheehan from Funimation. This is my 11th Otakon and Otakon's always been a very special show. It's, it's part of our big three in the summer with uh, other two um, shows, but Otakon stands out from the rest being that it brings the East Coast and it brings the fandom here in a way most cons can't. All the fans here absolutely love what they're here for. They come down to the down and dirty. They want to see panels. They want to buy things. And over the years, that's never really changed. You've seen um, kids um, grow up and grow into the older fans. You see them bring in their kids or they're bringing in their younger friends. For the, basically, they were like, I, my first Otakon, I was in college. Now I'm actually, you know, basically moved on, have a family, but I still always make Otakon. There's a special bond here between all the fans and the convention itself. It's something very special that everyone's put on here. Here, and it's just it's one of a kind and I think everyone who has not experience should definitely experience and congratulations to Otakon on their 20th show. Hey folks this is Daryl Surratt I'm here at Otakon 2013 this is 20 years if you don't say 20 anniversary because hey you know there's a technicality there I thought the con was pretty great with the exceptions of the fact that this place it ain't big enough to hold this event especially you know, in those skywalks and the like, I thought I was packed in like a can of sardines over at the times and, uh, you know, running back and forth between the Hilton and the Sheraton in this weather where it was raining torrentially. We got busted and flooded out like two or three times. Baltimore people can't drive. And speaking as a native Floridian, when I say you can't drive, you really can't drive. But as far as the convention itself, we just got out of the Yoko Kano concert, one of a kind kind of thing definitely come see it if you uh, someday have the chance to do so and um, once again I just want to remind everyone you guys need to go to these Masaru Mariyama panels and events you guys need to be there for Shinichiro Watanabe and you will see things that you have never seen before and you will never see again outside of that room and unless you're there in that room at that time on that day and um, it's a one-of-a-kind thing and I'll definitely be back next year uh, Gerald Rathgall with the Anime World Order podcast. Again, you know, 20th year um, for Otakon. I think it's my 10th year for Otakon, or 11th maybe. I think I came in 2002. Um, uh, really, really excellent con this year, but yeah, it is it is getting cramped here. I, I don't know how much more they can, they can manage here before they have to start looking for a new place. Uh, it's starting to get kind of insane. Uh, concert was terrific, even though it was kind of weird to hear uh, some of the songs, that some of the pieces that were done as piano pieces. And it was also kind of weird. I don't think she played any Escaflone. Um, the, one of the most recognizable things, but uh, none of that. But we did get to hear Macross Plus, and that's what I wanted to hear. So I'm quite happy with that. Hey, uh, Kevin Allspall, uh, awesome cast. Um, 20th year anniversary, like everyone's saying. This is actually only my second Otakon. Good show, good show. Just like everyone else, just got out of the Yoko Kano concert. Uh, it was incredible. I actually loved hearing all of her stuff on piano. But I do think she did get one Escaflone song in there. Not one of the main themes, but it was uh, it was in there. But uh, good stuff. I'm actually glad to hear a little bit out of Aquarian Evol too. Um, but good stuff. Lots of good panels. The Mariyama panel. He wasn't. Daryl wasn't kidding. That was excellent. Things you'll never see anywhere else. Things I am vowed to never speak of. It was a good time, and come to this con if you get a chance. Great con. Uh, Bales with Czechus, also awesome cast, osmcast.com. Otakon, it's great. It's a blast. It's gigantic. It's getting more gigantic. Uh, but the panels were great. The events were awesome. The concerts were amazing. And, yeah, you should totally come. Come so, you know, show, everyone needs to be more people show up so they really have to get something place new because it is getting kind of cramped in here. Well, it's really awesome to see all that great footage. And if you have any comments about Otakon or other conventions, you can check out our forums and our Facebook and our Twitter. 
and all that other stuff and call Google this too. yeah and call <laughs> this phone number that I can never remember after God knows how many years too adequate yeah that one <laughs> and um, if you're at a con um, let us know how it's going and we'll see you next week.